BestBookBits.com presents Onward, how Starbucks fought for its life without losing its soul by Howard Schultz. In this number one New York Times bestseller, the CEO of Starbucks recounts the story and leadership lessons behind the global coffee company's comeback and continued success. In 2008, Howard Schultz decided to return as the CEO of Starbucks to help restore its financial health and bring the company back to its core values. In Onward, he shares this remarkable story, revealing how during one of the most tumultuous economic periods in American history, Starbucks again achieved profitability and sustainability without sacrificing humanity. Offering you a snapshot of the recession that left no company unscathed, the book shows in riveting detail how one company struggled and recreated itself in the midst of it all. In addition, you'll get an inside look into Schultz's central leadership philosophy. It's not about winning, it's about the right way to win. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary on, onward. Introduction. In the introduction, Howard Schultz explains how he was inspired to start Starbucks in the bar he saw visiting Italy. He describes the experience of Italian cafes as human interaction that resembled an amazing theatre unfolding before his eyes. His goals, he says, was never only that of winning or making money, but to build a great company which also cares about people. One which would give people that feeling of Italian bars. The idea of striking a balance between profit and social conscience is indeed a big recurring refrain along the book. However, Starbucks was failing that objective. During the years that Howard Schultz stepped out as CEO, Starbucks started being obsessed with growth and bottom line revenues. He takes the blame for that shift as well, but in January 2008 he decided to step back and take the reins of the company again. Onward is a story of his comeback and Starbucks turnaround. Part 1, Love. Chapter 1, A Beverage of Truth. In Chapter 1 on Onward, Howard Schultz talks about unprecedented decision of closing all US stores to retrain the baristas. He says it was a bold move which was likely to have many critics. It was an admission that the company was not good enough, but Howard Schultz says that he knew that was the truth. But at the same time, it was a galvanizing move. The author had seen the quality of the Starbucks cafe and experienced deteriorate more and more, and he addressing the core product was a necessity. The simple fact that Starbucks was going for it was a strong message to the company was going to invest in its people, and to put people and customers back at its core. Chapter 2, A Love Story In Chapter 2, I particularly love the description of entrepreneurship Howard Schultz makes. He says that companies entrepreneurs build become part of them and deeply personal. The entrepreneurial journey has its high highs, but also low lows. That can break your heart. Entrepreneurs must love what they do so much that it's worth the pain. Doing anything else for the entrepreneur would be unimaginable. Howard Schultz says that when we love something, emotion drives us. As in reading onward, I have the perception indeed of a caring man with a big heart. Chapter 3, Surfacing. Howard Schultz explains about his humble upbringing. His father was a blue-collar delivery worker, and when he fell and broke his hip and ankle, he was simply sent home. No health care cover, no severance payment, no nothing. He deeply believed people deserved better than that. But just as tr a tragic for Schultz was the fact that his father never found fulfillment in his work. Work should be fulfilling, Howard Schultz thought. And he wanted to build that kind of company that his father never got a chance to work for. And to build such a company, one needs intent, process, and heart. Chapter 4, Nothing is Confidential. Howard talks about here about the, an internal memo he wrote and how painful it was to see it leaked. And yet that reminds him of two things. One, Starbucks needed to be more active in the digital media. It needed to have the power to tell its own story, rather than being the victim of a rumor mill. And second, was as long as he spoke from his heart, he would be fine. He says, Chapter 5, Magic. Chapter 5 is especially interesting because Howard was facing a dilemma, following his heart or the data. Customers loved the sandwich cheese that they were serving, but the melted and burnt cheese was destroying the coffee aroma. And the coffee aroma was at the core of Starbucks. Howard Schultz was not interested in finding a compromise. Chapter 6, Loyalty. The major lesson learned is never to let your success get to your head. Schultz says Starbucks never did, until some did. Chapter 7, Believe. The economy during the crisis was in a tailspin. I found it interesting that Howard Schultz was not sleeping before he stepped back as CEO. He wondered in the middle of the night what he was going to say. 
The message here for me was that we all, we all have weak moments. Part 2, Confidence. Chapter 8, A Reservoir of Trust. Howard says he wanted to return to the roots, but it must have not been as a way of dwelling on their shared history. He had to go back to the roots while reinventing and innovating. He would not cast blame on anyone, and the number one priority was that of instilling back confidence in the company's future. As a website of social interactions, I found it particularly interesting when he talked about a reservoir of trust. Howard says that during the years with exceptional employee benefits and respect, he had earned points within employees he could now use in the difficult times. This is basically the same principle of the social exchange rule, applied over time. And he's right, deposits do apply over time as well. One thing I didn't agree 100% with Howard was when he talks about competitor and he says Starbucks needed to differentiate itself. I think a company with strong roots doesn't need to differentiate itself. Like Simon Sinek so well explains in Start With Why, it's the commodity producers that need to differentiate themselves. The companies with a soul and strong values don't worry about differentiating. Indeed, soon after he explains that Starbucks had to show how their experience in customer relationships was not the same as a fast food business. It wasn't simply based on a transaction, but there was added human value. Then Howard talks further about the competition and says that McDonald's could actually serve well to Starbucks as a strong motivator. He's basically pointing out here the rule of out-group slash in-group. We all feel closer and more in Bolden when there's an enemy outside. Partners, customer, and shareholders. Howard says he puts partners first, then customers, then shareholders. To create long-term value for shareholders in a company must create value for the employees and their customers first, which is not what always happens under pressure of Wall Street. He was going to change that by slowing the opening of new stores first and putting the customer experience back on pole position. Chapter 9, A New Way to See. Howard was going to put Starbucks' core products first. Without great coffee, Starbucks had no reason to exist. Starbucks has to be the coffee authority. Chapter 10, Playing to Win. Howard says the company too often had to play on the defensive. Missing the earning estimate was the primary fear and the primary motivator behind Starbucks' actions. It was scandalous for him that Starbucks coffee was rated behind McDonald's. So he would first of all restart grinding beans directly in the store, something that had been scrapped in a push to serve customers faster. Chapter 11, Elevating the Core. Howard Schultz eliminated comps, figure reporting as one of the main culprit in driving short-term thinking. He refers once to walking into a store and seeing a bunch of stuffed animals for sales. They had nothing to do with coffee or Starbucks, but the store manager said they were great for sales and had a big profit margin. That was the mentality he needed to stamp out. Chapter 12, Get in the Mud. Howard Schultz says that Starbucks mentality had become that of big numbers. A bad store, a non-perfect cup of coffee, or an unhappy customer meant nothing with the big numbers. But they forgot that one's add up. The new mindset he wanted instead was to start from the core of what Starbucks was, one cup of coffee at a time, one cup of coffee at a time. Chapter 13, A Reason to Exist. Howard Schultz didn't particularly like external consultants, but decided to give them a try, and was very pleased with the top global leaders retreated a consultant firm organized. He presented their his transformation agenda, and was particularly touched seeing the line of people forming to sign their copy of the mission statement. Chapter 14, Benevolence Inside. The authors say Starbucks coffee is exceptional, but that emotional connection is their true value proposition. And it's something he says too subtle for many business people and cynics to appreciate or replicate. He also speaks here about the importance of their fair trade initiatives. Chapter 15, Beyond the Status Quo. Chapter 15 on Onward is all about the digital world and the new push of customer interactions he wanted to champion. Building a website to collect customer feedback and ideas was the first step. Chapter 16, Bold Moves. Howard Schultz talks about his colleague, Costco CEO, Jim Single, a hero of ethical retail entrepreneurship and the protagonist in Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek. Jim told him never to lose his customers because reacquiring them after they were gone was going to be much more difficult and expensive and Howard started introducing reward cards. Part 3's plan. 
Chapter 17, Whirlwind Starbucks. Howard talks about critics he received, especially from Wall Street, for his decisions. He says that Starbucks is not a coffee company serving people, but a people's company serving coffee. And human behavior is paramount because it's much harder to change than a recipe or a marketing strategy. That's what most of his critics never understood. He says that he realized later on how the good decisions he made had something in common while the bad ones didn't. The good ones, number one, were right and engaged partners, Starbucks employees. Number two, was right for customers and met their needs. And number three, was right for the business. Howard talks about how a few more frustrations here, including how he feels it's unfair that while Wall Street was taking the whole world down with them, Starbucks had become a symbol of excess with the Ford L Latte. Chapter 18, A Lethal Combination. Howard talks here about the outdated in-store technology and all the bloated expenses Starbucks was running. He says that growth had taken precedence over everything and was the carcinogen that invaded the company. Many of newly opened stores didn't even make sense from a financial perspective. Chapter 19, Reverence Building. Those closed opened without paying attention to the returns they would bring had to be closed. Howard here clearly describes how painful it was for him to close stores and let go of workers. It was 600 in the end, 70% of which had been opened in the last three years during the crazy push for growth and expansion. He describes all the steps he took to make sure he was giving the laid-off workforce a chance. Chapter 20, No Silver Bullets. Howard Schultz talks about the big success the customer car turned out to be, but how there was no silver bullet. I found it particularly interesting that the author fell for a silver bullet mentality, trying to find something that would change his business overnight. And in that desperate quest, he embraced a product, an Italian sombletto, that turned out to be a failure. Chapter 21, I know this to be true. Chapter 31 of Onward then goes into the pain of having to let go of office staff. He says that as much as they open stores haphazardly, so people were hired at times to cover up processes, deficiencies, throwing bodies at problems instead of fixing the root causes. He said again they tried to do it as empathetically as possible and provide him with more benefits than most of other similar companies would. Some employees understood and thanked, but some others didn't. And Howard tells of a few emails he received from some fired employees that hurt him to read. He says he read every name of the people being fired, not allowing them to become just a number on a spreadsheet. He also made sure to speak about it and give people the chance to vent publicly. He hoped that talking to him and doing so publicly would reinforce the very values some felt he was tarnishing. It reminded him a little bit of Ray Dalio when he says that you must love the person you shoot, but Howard seems much more human than Dalio. Part 4, Hope. Chapter 22, Truth in Crisis. Howard Schultz talks about how inefficient Starbucks supply chain was. Particularly interesting as a leadership lessons learned for me was the fact that the supply chain had no real supply chain expert. Starbucks used to promote from within what the author calls stretch hires, but it seems like sometimes one does need experts. Starbucks supply chain didn't need generalists to learn on the job. It had become a very complex matter that needed specialists. Chapter 23 a galvanizing moment. Schultz talks about the 10,000 people strong conference he was being pressured to scrap to save cost, but that he was adamant to keep. He says he needed to see all the leaders and store managers all together to reignite the passion and remind of the company's values. He says it was a huge success and a game changer. Chapter 24, Nimble Someone. Chapter 24 of Onward talks about the free coffee for voters campaign that managed to launch in a few weeks and which turned out to be a huge success. It was a reminder that it was still possible to move quickly and that social media was going to be a game changer when used smartly. It also reminded me of how Onwards used the political arena and the vote campaign to get some free advertising and advertising trigger. Chapter 25, Plan B. Chapter 25 deals with cost-cutting initiatives and the lean methodology Howard implemented. He says he was skeptical but soon changed his mind and the results were great. Chapter 26, Stay the Course. Chapter 26 on Onwards talks about the Investors Conference. I was particularly intrigued of how worried Howard was until a former NBA player on his board of directors gave a pep talk behind curtains that helped everyone step up and deliver. Part 5, Courage. Chapter 27, Innovate for More. Howard says that a good idea is not enough. 
A great execution is equally important, but instead of asking why, he should ask why not, and launched an R&D branch to come up with new products. Chapter 28, Conviction. Howard says he doesn't believe leadership has a single recipe for success, but he believes great leadership has two major attributes. Number one, confidence about the destination, and number two, the ability to bring people along. Chapter 29, Connecting Dots. Chapter 29 was interesting regarding how watchful famous people must be in front of cameras. Howard said Starbucks saw the situation in the UK being quite dire. The journalist interviewed a UK government official, soon after whom in turn lashed out against Starbucks. Lesson learned. Chapter 30, Balance the First. Howard Schultz talks here about the importance of charm, values, and human connection. And at the same time, he wants to do it at scale. He wants the magic of coffee, but also wants it replicable and at the same quality over and over. This reminds us of the Michael Greber when he says McDonald's is passionate about burgers as any other burger enthusiast, but he made it at scale. Howard wanted to balance efficiency with romance, humanity, and profitability. The lean methodology actually allowed a barista at Starbucks to be less stressed, move quicker, and also have more time to talk to customers. Chapter 31, Conscience. Traveling in Rwanda, Howard wonders how much can one person or a single company do? He did not have an answer, but he knew doing nothing was unconscionable. Chapter 32, Winning Setting. As the economy rebounds, Starbucks turned the corner for good. Chapter 33, Nihau. The book ends with Howard Schultz that after fixing the US business, looks at expansion again, starting with China. Epilogue. The epilogue stresses again the importance of balance. Howard says that growth is a tactic, not a strategy, and Starbucks lost its way when growth became a strategy. Again, Howard stresses the importance of a sustainable economic model and the emotional attachment with the customers. And of course, of being an authority in the core business. I particularly love when he said, the proof of Starbucks coffee authority will always be in the cup. And that's a wrap on the book summary on Onward by Howard Schultz. Check out our YouTube channel with over 450 video book summaries uploaded previously. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on what you think. And if there's a book you want me to do a summary on, comment below. Also, check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you'll find 450 written book summaries in the PDF where you can download and read offline in video categories such as biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationship, sales, spirituality, success and time management if you're into the audio version check out mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits where you'll find 450 audiobook summaries and more coming and last follow us on instagram at best book bits for daily motivational quotes and book summaries thanks for watching and listening hope you got something out of this go out there have a great day take care bye bye now